tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a simulcast that we do every once in a while. We'll get to that a little bit later with my buddy, Andrew Brandt. He is the guest on today's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. I'm promising to give you guys these winners, and I will do that at some point. I just want to make sure, as always, that we have time for everything else we need to get to. we got Carson Wentz getting signed. We've got rugby Welsh rugby stars getting signed. I mean, what is going on? And uh, obviously, there's some, some sad news as well coming out of South Florida with Vontae Davis. We'll get to all that as well as I certainly have some thoughts on the NFL, NFL offseason programs opening for a few teams. We're going to touch on that with Andrew Brandt as well. So let's dive into it. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Andrew, mm-hmm. love when we do this. I don't know. It's once every couple months or so. Uh, we'll get you on the show. I'll have you interviewed for the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, and we'll use it as a simulcast for the very popular Business of Sports podcast. Obviously, it goes without saying, but if you like what you hear and you listen to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, or those of you that check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, you should absolutely check out Andrew's Business of Sports every week, and hopefully vice versa. Those of you that get a chance to check out the Business of Sports every week, it's as far as I know, it's as good, if not better, than any other business of sports podcast out there. It's funny because there's a bunch of them now, but Andrew's kind of the OG, the <laughs> original in terms of a business of sports podcast. And since I'm not going to get a chance to see him on Friday at Villanova like I did last year, I wanted to at least be able to see him here on the show. Andrew, thanks so much for coming on the show. As always, are you fired up for Friday's event at Villanova? Yeah, Ross, always good to be with you. We used to do this all the time back in the day. We're both OGs in this area. But now, like you said, we get together, do this kind of simulcast for each of our podcasts under your network uh, every six weeks or so. Always love doing it, getting your insights on to my listeners, my insights to your listeners, and everybody should be everybody else's listeners on this thing. Friday, you mentioned, here we are midweek. Friday is our annual symposium at Villanova. So where I have my job running a sports law, sports business program, if anybody's around Philadelphia, you got to come. 9 a.m. at Villanova Law School. It's easily easy to find in Villanova, PA. And this week, this year's topic is the changing landscape of this sports media. So we're going to talk about how we've moved to streaming, how now everything's on Amazon or Peacock, the rise of podcasts, the rise of all kinds of ways to view games and broadcasts and sports programming. We're going to have executives from all the leagues, Ross. We're going to have Amazon. We're going to have NBC execs. We're going to have some players and their reaction. Our old friend Brian Westbrook will be there and some local Philly media stars like Angelo Cataldi and Howard Eskin. So we're going to have a lot going on on Friday morning. Come anytime between 9 and noon at Villanova Law. Love to see everybody there to sort of see me firsthand and see the insights on stage. That is awesome. I was there last year. It was a very well-run, well-attended event. I'm happy to report that the food that they had for (laughs) providing us in the background was delicious. I had like five of those mini sandwiches that they provided. I still remember that. It was excellent. So I don't know if you get those if you just go, but I think that's the only reason why Jack's going, our producer. I think Jack, he says he's going for networking. I think he wants the free food in that back room, the green room, potentially. No, you know, it's funny, Andrew, that you mentioned the streaming and the changing media landscape. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, and it actually came out of the owners' meetings. It's funny, when the owners' meetings happen, I usually think about you. Because when you were with the Packers, correct me if I'm wrong, they obviously don't have an owner. So you were, I don't know if it was always or usually or sometimes, you were essentially one of the Packers reps at the owners' meetings, right? Yeah, Ross. Well, every team, to be fair, every team brings more than the owner. You know, they bring a contingent. And uh, just to take people behind the scenes, there are the owner-owner meetings, which 
our president at the time, Bob Harlan, attended one per club. Sometimes they allow two per club. It's usually an owner and a kid or whoever is representing the team as a president. I was in the WCE group every year, Ross, and I went every year. That means working club executives, which is just sort of a catch-all for general managers, cap managers, the contingents that went. And be interesting because the, the competition committee, which was many years ago and still today chaired by Rich McKay, would come in and they basically practice on us. They'd kind of give their presentation on whatever rule changes were going on. And we'd give our insights and our thoughts and our comments and our reactions. And that was to be used for the, the one, the, the big meeting with the owners where they would get votes on these topics. So I was in the WC meetings. We weren't the head coaches or we weren't the uh, presidents or the uh, owners, but these meetings are always a nice gathering. And let me just say, coming from Green Bay, Ross, to sun-soaked locations like Florida and Arizona, we came early and we stayed late. <laughs> <laughs> we were the, the Green Bay guys and Buffalo guys got there like on Friday and stayed till Wednesday instead of Sunday and Monday. Oh, man, that makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I think one of the biggest news to come out of it, Andrew, was on the media side yeah. with the NFL putting two games on a Wednesday on Christmas Day, I guess after previously saying they weren't going to do it. I think that that and a couple of the rule changes were the biggest takeaways from last week's NFL owners meeting. Now, I've seen some of your tweets. And I encourage people to follow Andrew at Andrew Brandt, B-R-A-N-D-T. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. But I've seen some of your posts. But I guess just your reaction. It felt like people were up in arms about it on some level. I guess I was not sure why. I'm curious to get your thoughts on this decision. First on the Christmas games, I mean, you're right. I don't know if it was Roger Goodell or whoever said last year, well, we're not going to do it if it's on a Wednesday like in 2024. Well, they're right. They're not going to do a Christmas game. They're doing two, right? So they're doing two. And I sort of tweeted out uh, an angry face of Adam Silver because they're going to overtake the NBA, which has traditionally been the spot for Christmas viewing. Yeah, I just don't think there's any limit, Ross, to where they're going to program. And I think the up in arms part is more response to like, they'll never invade Christmas like on a Wednesday. But as you suggested, why not? I mean, whether it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I read that the teams playing on Wednesday will play on Saturday. So it's just like Sunday to Thursday in terms of rest time. It's where we are. You know, it's where we are in this ecosystem of a $20 billion business. Maybe it's 21 by now, 22. They're going to do this for revenue. They're going to do this for the biggest bang for the buck. And the end, and the un, end result, Ross, is we'll watch. You know, we'll watch if it's Tuesday night at midnight. We'll watch. So why wouldn't they do it? And the other thing, quickly on the rules changes, I was a little confused, frankly, because what's happened over the last 10 years with kickoffs has been we're kind of really getting rid of them because of safety, because it's the most concussive play in football, because the per capita hand injuries on kickoffs are a problem. I assumed five years ago, by now, we wouldn't have kickoffs. I was wrong. Now they're bringing back kickoffs. And there's different, as you know better than I do, all these different ways the kickoff's going to be run. But it seems to me that there are going to be more kickoffs. Now, are there going to be more concussive plays? Well, starting the coverage team in front, not a, not a running start, maybe that'll take care of it. But that was confusing to me based on the policy about kickoffs we've had the last five years. I got thoughts on both, right? So first yeah. of all, and I've said this already on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, but you know the, the number one thing I've seen people say about the two Christmas games is the NFL is just being greedy. To which I would say, yes, they are. <laughs> and I would say, and I and I put this in a, a you know, posted this on social media last week. You know, the players in large part at 48 and a half percent of the revenue or whatever it is like greed, you know, to use my Michael Douglas from the movie wall street, greed right. is good. Like in all these, like and we might bring it up too. If we get to the Otani stuff and betting people are always like, Oh, the NFL lets the, you know, 
They take all this gambling money, but they don't let the players participate. Yeah, well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know why the players can't be participating in betting on NFL. Like, this isn't complicated. And in terms of the money they're taking, again, the players get a large portion of that money. Like, greed is good. I, so I, I never understand that. Like, the NFL, every move they make to try to grow that top number, that benefits the players. They want more money for the risks they're taking with their body. So I, I don't understand that part of it. And speaking of those risks, I talked with uh, Jeff Miller. He's come on the right. show multiple times, Andrew. And I know him well. Yeah. They, they feel like the, um, the kickoff had become a non-play. Yeah. It was like 22% returns. You know, I don't know what data they have about people going to the bathroom or, you know, whatever. But it was basically a non-play. And they they believe that that's bad for business, right? Like, this is an entertainment product. You want the sport to be entertained. You don't want to have plays within your game that are non-plays. And so now they think that this will actually be a play that will be eventful and like over 80% returns without, you know, having the same level of injury because – you know, they're not getting these 30, 40 yard head starts at each other anymore. It becomes more of like a a running play, really, like almost yeah. like a scrimmage play, more so than what ended my career, which is you know, the 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 crazy collisions on kickoff return. Two things. I would I do want to not push back, but just give a side note on the Christmas games. And I think the pushback a lot of people is because of the statement last year. Again, I don't know if it was Goodell or one of his executives. We're not going to play on Wednesday. Uh, I think we have to understand this. And this is the business of sports. I'm speaking as an expert. There's no area that's going to be sacred, right? I think we can sort of lose the idea that there's a sanctity in sports, especially the NFL. Christmas is sacred. Nope. Uh, network television is sacred. Nope. Network television is sacred for the playoffs. Nope. <laughs> network television is safe for the divisional round. Probably not. Will network television be sacred for the Super Bowl? Probably in our lifetime, but I can't even say for that. Ads on jerseys. Probably not sacred. Probably not sacred. Uh, alcohol, bet, uh, betting, of course, is no longer sacred. I think we have to recognize that that's tough for, I'm older than you for my generation, but I, I'm a realist. You know, as I, as I use the Billy Bean line from Moneyball all the time, adapt or die. This is where we are. Nothing is sacred anymore when the revenue comes in, the business of sports. And quickly, Ross, on the other rule change, the, the, the takedown from the side, the hip swivel tackle. Yep. Listen, I, you know a lot about, about this better than I do, but... To people who say, well, what are you going to the defensive players? What are you going to do? You can't tackle high. You can't tackle low. You can't tackle them side. And my answer is kind of like what you said about greed. Yes. Yes, you can. Because you know what? Tackling doesn't sell. Offense sells. This is a business. Sport points was down last year. Scoring was down. This is what they want. They want more offense. And they want their best players not on the sideline after a hip swivel tackle that got them injured. So, yes, yes, it's unfair to defensive players. Yes, it is. We want offense. You know, the one other thing I'll say about the sacred thing, Andrew, which is a great point, the Eagles opener is on a Friday night during football season, during high school football season. You would have thought – the only thing I thought was sacred was Friday nights during high school football season, and yet that's not sacred. Either. So you can add that to your list. <laughs> right. um, I wanted to get your thoughts – on the off-season program because I'll talk about this a little bit later in, in just the Ross Tucker football podcast portion of, of the show, but three teams started their off-season workouts this week. And Andrew, you know, you can speak to this better because you're in Green Bay. I never understood the guys that didn't come to it. I mean, for me, okay, it's $315 now a, a workout. You get free healthy breakfast, free healthy lunch. If they had three options for lunch, whatever I didn't have, I'd pack up something else, take it home for dinner. I don't. Maybe I'm just cheap. Maybe I just convenient. I don't know. But like you, you have the amenities of the team facility. You're around your teammates. 
you're showing the coaches you're around, but I know that was something you had to deal with in Green Bay. It was a very geographically undesirable place to work out in the off season. But I think you've uh, you've delineated the two levels of player, and I don't mean to denigrate you, Ross, but every player who is not a star, yes, they're going to be there. Because if you're not, it doesn't look good when training camp comes. I had a heck of a time trying to get stars to come for the offseason workout program, even as I changed the contracts to include significant uh, bonuses for working out 85, 90% of the offseason. I had players tell me, Andrew, you can put 10 million in that bonus. I'm not coming. You know, so this is what you do. Now, back in my day and your day, off-season programs were 14 weeks long. And now they're 10, I think, at the most. Uh, and it's been a big emphasis by the NFLPA to reduce all that. But yeah, for anyone that is going to turn down that money, it was a lot less when I was there. But that's plus workout bonuses that I put in most players' contracts. They were all in there. And they still wouldn't come, no matter how much. I mean, I had a teammate, $500,000 for Jeez. 75% of the workouts. In 2002, Andrew, didn't come to one. I, I was, like, blown away by that. Um, you know, it's not going to get a lot of attention, but I saw where Taylor Heineke took a pay cut, stay with the Falcons. Have you had those conversations? Did you ask guys to take pay cuts? That's got to be a an awkward one. No, it totally is. And, you know, we saw this with, I get a lot of Packer fans. We saw this with Aaron Jones. We haven't really talked since the start of free agency. You know, what has to happen, I've been an agent, as you know, is when the team comes to you from the agent side, you have to, whether it's tampering or who cares, you have to find out what that market is if you say no to the pay cut. And you have to judge, like, if I say no to this pay cut, can I get more or can I get in a situation where I'm happy? as happy or more, that's a really tough job for an agent. That's where agents earn their money. On the team side, I always talk about credibility, Ross. If you do that to a player like Heineke and he says no, and he comes back and says, no, but I'll do X, Y, Z, you got to be prepared to cut him. So whenever you go to a player saying a pay cut, you have to be prepared for the or else because naturally the or else is going to be, we're going to release you. If the or else is, ah, eh, my bad, I didn't really mean it. No, you lose credibility not only with that player and agent, but with other players. So these are tough conversations, but it has to come from all parts of the organization. We're going to go to this player. If he says no, we're going to move on. And whether it was Heineke or other players we've seen this offseason, they decide to stay. Aaron Jones, of course, decided to leave, got what we think is a better job. I'm sorry, better paying job in Minnesota. But I know my Packer fans are still, still see that not seething, but sad about Aaron Jones. What you know, it kind of feels like the Broncos did that to Russell Wilson during the season, and he said, and he did the or else, right? And they and they kind of said, uh, okay, we'll let you keep playing because well, they're winning six more weeks. Yeah, yeah, that is funny. Um, <laughs> last thing, you know, Monday night. I watched uh, Caitlin Clark in Iowa against LSU. And I tweeted this, Andrew, at Ross Tucker NFL. I have daughters who are 12 and 10. They're not basketball players. They're not going to be basketball players. And yet, everybody talking about it, like it just made me like so, uh, I don't know, what, like happy, proud, hopeful. I I'm just so thrilled that these young ladies are getting this attention, this spotlight, because they deserve it. Yeah, Ross, I'm not a girl dad like you. I got boys, but I, I got chills last night, too, and I like everyone watched it. And chills more for what what Twitter was dominated by it. Uh, everyone's talking about it. I'm in school. All my students are talking about it, the guys, the girls. I feel great for the girls who are sort of hesitant that, to get into the sports classes I teach. I mean, this is a moment. And it's Caitlin Clark. It's the whole energy from all those games. It's, but she's, she's a phenom. You know, she is a force multiplier in college basketball. She has elevated the product, not just Iowa, not just her, the product. Think about how many people in sports do that. It's very rare. And I, I've been pushing back against any notion that she would have 
made more staying in Iowa rather than going pro because she's going to bring along all the real NIL, which is endorsement money, along with whatever she makes from the WNBA. And I predict, Ross, she will do that in the WNBA. Whatever you think of the WNBA now, it will be much bigger because of that one player. And I use this word sparingly, but I think it's really a well, well stated phrase. It's she is a force multiplier and will be in the NBA. And that's going to be great for women's sports in general. Andrew, you're a force multiplier every time you come on the show. Really appreciate the conversation. Check him out on social at Andrew Brandt. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. Of course, the symposium Friday at Villanova, Business of Sports, Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Thank you so much, Andrew, for the time. Really appreciate it. This was great as always, Ross. See you soon. Love those conversations with Andrew Brandt like I love Labatt Blue Light, whether it's with friends, with family, by myself, watching hoops. I had a couple watching Caitlin and the gals on Monday night. Always enjoy responsibly. It's delicious beer from Labatt USA in Buffalo, New York. Tuck's Takes. All right, Ross, the Chiefs, they signed quarterback Carson Wentz. The commander signed wide receiver Olamide Zacchaeus. The Chiefs signed Welsh rugby star Luis Rezemit. And they also bring back Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And the Falcons will retain backup quarterback Taylor Heineke after he agreed to a pay cut. Well, Andrew and I touched on the pay cut part of it. Probably smart by Taylor. Make sure you have one of those coveted number two jobs. Those are pretty tough to get. Uh, Carson Wentz, supposedly the Chiefs wanted to sign him last year. But he thought he was still a starter. Man, that would be something, right? If Mahomes went down and Wentz played really well under Andy Reid. How many times has Andy Reid done that and gotten guys like paid elsewhere? You know, Alex Smith and you go back to the Eagles, Kevin Cobb, A.J. Feely. It, it's crazy. I don't know much about Luis Reese Zamet. I'm sure some of our listeners, though, do. Let me know. Let me know what I should know about him. NFL's offseason programs open on Tuesday for three teams, the Falcons, the Commanders, and the Chargers. And I want to make this my Labatt take of the week, Jack. I feel pretty strongly about this. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it again. It's presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Canadian Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA. Buffalo, New York. I've never really understood the guys that don't show up for the off-season program. I mean, they must just be that rich in their minds. It's $315 per workout. I mean, you're talking about over $1,200 for a three-hour workout, four mornings a week. Plus, you get awesome, healthy breakfast, free, healthy lunch. I used whatever I didn't eat for lunch. I would get the other entree, pack it up, take it home for dinner. I'm not going to be able to get food like that for myself. And you're at the facilities. You go to the hot tub, the cold tub, maybe the sauna, maybe the steam room. You're around your teammates. You're showing your organization that you're there. I, I don't get it. Um, you know, I, I wonder. I'd love to talk to the guys, the stars that don't come, and even some stars don't come. And if they go look back on it now, I bet you they wish they had just gone. Just gone and gotten that money. Like, it's free money. Whatever. Former NFL quarterback Vontae Davis passed away at the age of 35. Awful. I have not heard any more details about this other than, you know, that initially that no foul play uh, was, was being considered. I think, obviously, anytime someone dies that young of an age, A, it's awful and tragic and all those things. But also, I think everybody's, you know, always curious to know what happened. New York Jets offensive guard John Simpson is number one in the NFL at almost $1 million in performance-based pay. His teammate, Aaron Rodgers, was dead last with $81. <laughs> you know, 2002, Jack, was the first year they had this. I probably tell the story every year. We didn't even know they had it. I don't remember what CBA it was negotiated in. I don't remember when it kicked in. But 2002, I want to say like a month after the season, I got a check for like $16,000, which was more than, I think that was about what a weekly paycheck was for me, maybe more. 
I thought the Cowboys sent me an extra check by mistake. I was like, not going to tell anybody. I was like, I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody. It was awesome. You guys are awesome. Greg Cosell will be awesome tomorrow. Definitely check out the fantasy feast as we're breaking down some of these free agent moves. I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out myfrontpagestory.com. I love when, I, first of all, I love love. I love when you guys are able to get your loved ones the best gift of all time, whether it's a birthday gift or anniversary or whatever. Huge, huge fan of it. And if you ever get a My Front Page Story story for anyone, forward me the email confirmation, and I will send you a signed autograph in the mail. Lovebackofficeschedule.com, steakhousesports.com, humanheadnyc.com, Sportaculture, and Pizza Boy Brewing.